Hello, my name is Efe and I'm a strategist here at Solutions 8 and this is our free Google Tag Manager course for you guys. And this will be the first of many and I think we're going to create a playlist for you actually if you like it of course so make sure to write down what you think about this and don't worry the on the first one is with PowerPoint slides the rest will be me going through the process in a video since this is my first video uh, I'll hide behind this so let's start what is Google Tag Manager and what it is used for first of all we should understand that digital marketing is completely based on data at this point smart campaigns are outperforming the stunt ones and the machine learning is slowly taking over nurturing the ai is a huge part of the job now and you have to know your way around google tag manager to do so in this video you'll learn about what is google tag manager what it is used for and how you can use it so let's start from scratch what is Google Tag Manager? Google Tag Manager is a free tracking and tag management tool that allows you to implement snips, snippets of codes, uh, track certain events, and customize the data. It is like a vascular access to your source code. You can simply implement and remove third-party scripts without the help from a developer. It's also great for marketers who don't have access to your CMS. Google Tag Manager really speeds up the setup process. What is the difference between Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics? Tag Manager and Analytics are two different tools, just like Google Ads. Google Tag Manager is a tag management tool that allows you to install tags, customize data, and helps you track certain events, while on the other hand, Google Analytics is a reporting tool. You cannot monitor the outcomes of your tags in Google Tag Manager. There is no reporting feature in Google Tag Manager. Google Analytics tracking codes alone will not give you all the data you need, like total revenue or the average car value. You have to implement additional script codes to get that kind of data. Google Tag Manager helps you push that kind of data and also track certain events like form submits or phone clicks or mail clicks and etc. So what are the benefits of Google Tag Manager Why we use it? The most common use of Google Tag Manager is track custom events. Let's assume you have an e-commerce website. Purchases are your main conversion events, but what about micro conversions like WhatsApp button clicks? You create custom triggers to track clicks, outbound links, element visibility, page scrolls, form submits, and more. That way, uh, you will be able to collect micro conversion data and segment valuable visitors from all visitors. A, B test different marketing lists and create similar audiences based on these users. The other is uh, implementing snippets without coding knowledge. Okay, um, here's a scenario for you. You bought a third party tool and they gave you a small script code to add to your website. You call your developer and he tells you that he's busy and will take care of it later, but you need it now to go on with the setup process. With Google Tag Manager, you all you have to do is create a custom HTML tag and copy paste the script code. That's it. You don't need a developer or coding knowledge. Another cool feature is, is that Google Tag Manager enables you to test your scripts in the preview mode. That way you can test different tags, uh, implement third-party script codes and more without impacting your existing traffic. A quick note, um, ensure your new changes will work perfectly before you publish them. Sometimes you can crush your website if you don't know what you're doing. So just be careful. Um, all in one. With Google Tag Manager, we can control all of your tags in one platform. For example, if your Google Ads remarketing tag is not working and you don't have to uh, go look for it in the source code, you can find it easily on your Google Tag Manager to fix what's wrong. Or um, imagine you you want to use a different CRM tool for your website. Just pause the old one stack and create a new tag for the new one. That way, if you want to go back, nothing will be removed. You just um, unpause the old one and get rid of the new thing. Last is customize data. Once you learn your way around Google Tag Manager, you can customize data layers to push certain variables to your uh, Google Analytics, create custom metrics on Google Tag Manager, or you can even make changes on your web pages according to the visitors. 
Um, sky is the limit with Google Tag Manager, to be honest. I'll show you more advanced stuff once we cover all the basics. Just, just trust me on this one. So how does Google Tag Manager work? Uh, when you install the Tag Manager to your CMS, your website will be able to communicate with the Tag Manager servers. Thus, everything you put on your Tag Manager will be on your page when it loads automatically. A Google Tag Manager consists of three elements, tags, triggers, and revivals. What are Google Tag Manager tags? To better explain tags and triggers, let me tell you about conditional first. In computer science, conditionals are programmatic language commands for handling decisions. If blah blah happens, then do blah blah. Tags are the then part of the Google Tag Manager. They are basically script codes. For example, if page loads, then run the Google Ads remarketing code. Google Ads remarketing code snippet is the tag. Um, here's a list of the most common used uh, tags like Google Analytics tracking codes, conversion linker, Facebook pixel, TikTok pixel, Google Ads remarketing, Google Ads conversion tracking, and Hotjar. What are Google Tag Manager triggers? Back to conditionals. Triggers are the if part of the Google Tag Manager. Triggers fires the tags like if someone clicks on a button, if a user submits a form, when someone spends 40 seconds on a page, etc. Most mistakes are done in the triggers part, so pay close attention to triggers. Last one is um, Google Tag Manager variables. A variable is a named placeholder for a value that will change, like the um, page URL or class of the button or cart value. Let's give an example. If you want to track add to cart button clicks, right? Um, you'll choose the button click trigger. But if you leave it that way, you will count every, like all the button clicks. Um, that's where the variable comes in. You will set the variable of the button clicks for add to cart, and voila, you will tracking only the add to cart button clicks. And um, what next? That's pretty much it. If you like this video and you want more. The upcoming courses will be about how to set up tracking codes, uh, time, scroll, and click triggers, um, track form submissions without the need of thank you page, enhanced e-commerce tracking, simplify UTM links, uh, write first-party cookies, uh, create custom audiences for Facebook. Like um, this will step up your Facebook game. Like <laughs> trust me, and more to be honest. Um, so I'll leave it to Cassim. Take it away. <laughs> Wait, before you go, I'm constantly looking for amazing people to come join our team. So if you're passionate about Google ads and you're passionate about customer success, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. And we'd love to see you as a part of the solutions 18. Also, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that we actually know what we're doing. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. We shoot a video every single day and I don't want you to miss out on any of it. Lastly, if you have questions, comments, concerns, confessions, or you just hate my face and my voice, go ahead and hit us up in the comments. We get very little human interaction, and even the heckling is something that I kind of get a kick out. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being subscribers if you're a subscriber. Don't forget to apply if you're interested in working at Solutions 8. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow.